your next adventure. So we have a customer that brought us our this JLU. We're gonna swap out this old plastic bumper for the uh, stamp metal Rubicon Recon Edition bumper. So we've got here, the customer brought this to us used. Uh, you can also buy this aftermarket, but this was probably off of a, uh, a either a later model Rubicon, a JL Rubicon, or a JK uh, Rock Hard or Recon Edition. So, or Hard Rock, I'm sorry. And uh, we've got a Maximus 3 bumper hoop. We've got a Warren VR Evo 10S with synthetic cable that we're going to put on. Uh, we've got the Maximus 3 winch plate, which is right here behind me. This is a Maximus 3 red powder coated hook loop, so you can hook your winch hook onto it and tighten it up. So the first step we're going to take is we've removed the plastic uh, air dam that goes underneath the front bumper. This is actually going to get replaced with a metal skid plate with the new rock hard bumper. These, uh, there's I believe four eight millimeter bolts that are taken out of the air dam first and then it's got some of these um, little plastic uh, locks in them. So these come out by separating the top by sliding it out with a, uh, there's a tool made for this, um, body removal tool, body panel tool. You can uh, slide these up so they look like this and once they're slid up, they're unlocked and then you can pull the uh, mechanism out, the fastener out. There are eight M12 nuts that'll come off the back of the bumper. You can get to them. They are where the bumper bolts to the front edge of the frame rails. There's also a plate in here that has two of those um, locking plastic clips. It's kind of a filler panel. So that's gonna come out first. And then Chris will take this uh, front bumper off. It's already been unbolted. Now there's also going to be a plug that you can see now that we've exposed it that is for the fog lights. And you can see where we've already gone ahead and cut the wire. We cut the plug off so that we can utilize it on the rock hard or the hard rock edition bumper for those fog lights. So that gets wired in to the harness that's already on that front bumper and it'll just plug right in when we put it back together. So the next two things we're gonna take off are the uh, reinforcement tie brackets. There's uh, bolts on either side. On the inside only. I'm sorry, on the inside only. We're gonna take out and then this is the uh, skid plate mounting bracket. Those will get removed next. So that's a total of four, four bolts and we'll have those two pieces off. So next is the winch mounting plate from Maximus 3. It'll go in, and Chris is gonna show you how to do this with one person by using some short temporary bolts. So first step, he's gonna slide the winch mount into position. He's gonna mount to the front of the frame rails, and he's gonna use this short temporary bolt to hold it in place while he puts in the uh, side bolts. So there's two bolts that'll go in the side rear of the winch plate, and two that'll go in the front of the winch plate. It's going to be accessing the bolt through this hole in the bottom section of the frame. He's gonna put a nut on it that's got Loctite on it, or he's gonna put Loctite on the bolt before he puts the nut on and uh, tighten those two bolts down. Yeah. Chris is using a 19 millimeter socket and a 19 millimeter open end box wrench. Tighten this bolt down. The, uh, the plate that is part of the Hard Rock Edition bumper is going to come through these four holes. So this temporary bolt will be removed and this spacer plate will go in between. That'll give you the same spacing as the uh, winch mount so that you've got a flat surface. Once you take the temporary bolt out, make sure that this hole stays aligned where you see my finger coming through so that when you put the bumper up against it, the four threaded bolts will go through. 
This is where Chris spliced in the wiring harness from the factory bumper onto the fog light harness on the rock hard addition bumper, hard rock addition bumper. So it's all ready to be plugged in. We have an Evo um, VR10S Warren winch. This Warren winch, uh, you can see this is the positive cable to the battery that will run through the engine compartment, connect to the battery. Uh, this is the ground cable that we'll use to run from the solenoid to the uh, to the battery. This one comes with a great, I love this remote. Uh, Warren, instead of on the Platinum 10S that we have, they only give you the option of having a wireless remote. So this Evo actually comes with a remote that you can use corded and you can see this remote plugs in. There's actually an alignment um, slide here. You can see the indent here. Slide the winch. You can plug the winch directly in, or the winch remote directly in to the winch at the solenoid pack. And you've got in and out, or you can disconnect it. And you can use this remote from inside the cab. You don't have to worry about the line laying across your paint or if you need to handle it to your spotter to run the winch while you're inside the vehicle you can do so the winch also comes with a standard worn hook um, we prefer to replace these with a factor 55 uh, either flat link or ultra hook um, the worn fairly that we're going to use just for this install temporarily we'll replace this with a, with a factor 55 aluminum as well but this is a worn, I believe this is probably based on the weight, probably a steel uh, fairly that's been powder coated black. This winch is wound with, I believe it's 95 feet of synthetic cable. Underneath the gray area of the cable, there's actually a red wrapping area that should never come off the winch. Um, that red wrapped area is a little bit thicker and it's to take the heat of the motor so that the heat of the motor when run for a long time for a long pull, doesn't affect the synthetic cable, synthetic line. Uh, this is the thimble that the hook or the um, ultra hook will go through. This is your uh, clutch disengagement and engagement. So this allows you to switch to free spool so that you can pull the line out without running the motor of the winch and then lock in so you can, it's gonna run off the gears. So the next thing we have is we have the hardware for the winch. Uh, there's actually four bolts that'll bolt through the winch plate on the bottom of the winch. And they'll go through those four holes. And then there's nuts inside of this that are square that'll actually sit in this little spot right here in the winch. Those are your nut, nut cert plates. So we'll put each of those in before we set the winch in place. It comes with lock washers and washers as well to use with your four bolts. The ground cable is going to attach right here on this stud. You can see that we've got a uh, washer and a lock washer here. And this will go to the negative terminal on the battery. We'll show you that later when we get the winch in place. So now that we've got the ground terminal on, we uh, use the lock washer, not the flat washer. We took the flat washer off so we have enough thread on this ground bolt. Chris is using a half inch socket to tighten that down before we put the winch in place. So in preparation to put the winch in place, we've attached the ground cable and we've put the four nut certs in. Next step is to set it into the winch plate. So Chris is putting the bolts in through the winch plate. You'll have to find the 
bolt holes that line up. We're having to push it because of the wires that come out of the back of the solenoid. We're having to push it tight up against the grill uh, for him to be able to line up the four holes. And he's using a five eight. Yes. He's using a five eight socket to tighten the bolts into the threaded plates that we previously put in the winch. And he's got a lock washer and a flat washer on the bolt before he puts them in. So the next step is for Chris to route the positive and negative battery terminal cables. And he routed them, you can see them here if you look down next to the coolant lines, between the coolant line and the back of the headlight. And we used, uh, we used the claw to go down and grab the end of the wires and pull them up through. And then they'll run behind the headlight and underneath the airbox mount and come out the other side of the airbox and then split. The positive terminal is going to get connected first and the negative terminal is going to get connected next. Now while Chris is in here connecting these battery terminals, I do want to point out that this uh, 3.6 liter Pinstar engine really needs to come out and be replaced with a 6.4 uh, Hemi or a uh, 6.2 supercharged Hellcat. They'd have a lot more fun, especially considering the owner has a Hellcat Challenger himself. You'll see that if you use the cable, plug it in, the red light will be on to tell you that your winch has power. When you test that, you've got a uh, the middle button will be your out button, the bottom button is your in button. If you disconnect, you'll see the light goes out. And to take it to a wireless remote, you'll hold down the top button, the mode button, until the light turns blue. And now we can run the winch out and in wirelessly. Warren did good with this setup. So one thing we found with using the hook anchor and the Warren fair lead, uh, because of the thickness of the Warren fair lead, the bolts that come with the fair lead are not long enough to get through both pieces of plate and into the bumper. So we're gonna have to get some different bolts to uh, put this fair lead together. So the bolt really needs to be about a two inch long bolt uh, to replace this, and you need to use a grade eight bolt. The actual bolts that we're going to use in here are temporary since we're waiting on the factor 55 uh, fair lead so we'll put these in temporarily these are only grade five this winch won't get any use until the factor 55 fair leads put back on uh, chris is using an h5 allen and a 13 millimeter, wrench. 13 millimeter wrench for the nut to tighten the hook anchor to the bumper So the next step is we're going to put the spacers in. They go in this direction. So remember they're lining up with these three holes, but we're going to put them on the back of these studs on both sides. Next step, we're going to feed the winch line through the fair lead. And we're going to bring the bumper back. Make sure your pigtail is out of the way for your wiring. Line up the four bolts. Okay, so go ahead and plug the uh, fog lights in on that side. And then we're going to follow up with the eight nuts that tighten the bumper to the frame. Yeah. Chris is using an 18 millimeter socket on a 3 8 inch drive impact. So the next thing is to put on the Maximus 3 SLP hoop. Um, this is going to use the factory uh, nut plates on the back that are already in place and the factory bolts. We're set it down and line it up with those four.
These bolts already have Loctite on them, red Loctite. And Chris is using a T45 Torx bit to tighten these down. And I've attached the Warren hook, which is temporary until the Factor 55 hook comes in. Uh, this has a cotter pin that you bend back flat and pull out. And then it has a cross pin that comes out. Then the cross pin will go back through inside of the uh, thimble of the winch. And the cotter pin gets put back in and bent out. And the Factor 55 works similar, but it has a snap ring and it's more of a sleeve that it slides through. Good system. So the last thing that Chris did was he took out two of the bumper uh, Torx bolts and these three were already out. He put the skid plate up against it and put these three Torx bolts in with the T45 Torx bit. I hope you enjoyed our video install and I hope that you will like and subscribe to us on YouTube and also subscribe to us on Instagram and Facebook and check out our website at aggressivecrawlers.com. Check out our Hemi conversions and our Rebel Off-Road Coilover conversions and our dealership conversions. Thank you.